In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why Candace Owens, AKA Red Pill Black, is right. This is a word. So hey y'all, welcome to some more Food for Thought with me, Reg. So to start out, I'm sitting here enjoying this delicious greens too from Pressed Juicery. And I discovered them, they are uh, they're this little juice bar that's like stuck at the, kind of at the base of the World Trade Center, not exactly at the base of the World Trade Center, you know, the Freedom Tower, whatever they're calling it these days. And they're this, just this little, juice joint and, and they you know basically they're doing the same fresh pressed juices that i like to enjoy from time to time when i'm trying to just like chill the heck out from everything else and um the price is right and i hope it's because they're doing some kind of a cooperative thing and they're able to do these and whatever they're not exploiting workers what have you so y'all i'm feeling glum I just have to admit it. I just have to come out and say it, y'all. I'm feeling glum and I don't know why. Everything is going well. I don't know, maybe it's the time of the year, maybe it's the weather, maybe I'm not outdoors as much as I'd like to be. Maybe I miss Detroit. Things are going really well. I have this awards ceremony tomorrow. I'm winning the Jefferson Award for social something or other. I should know the name of the damn award the people are trying to give me. But I'm working with some incredible people. I just joined the board of the National Organization, the Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed, Inc. This weekend, I'm taking a group of young people, young playwrights on a writing retreat. Y'all know I just got into Jessica Gordon Nemhard's book, Collective Courage. I just finished it, actually. I've been listening to it on my phone, you know, having Siri read it to me, read the PDF to me. And I finished it and immediately went back to the beginning and started again. This book was amazing. And another really, really great thing, I'm gonna be sitting down to talk to the author, Jessica Gordon Nemhard, next week. So yeah, I should be feeling like really, really good, but I'm just feeling a little bit glum. That's probably why I'm drinking this green juice right now. So as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about Candace Owen, AKA Red Pill Black. Fact. From 1620 to 1865, the bodies of African-American men and women were enslaved in America. The year is now 2017, and the minds of these males and females are now enslaved. Now, I was asked by one of the viewers to comment on Red Pill Black. When I was asked, I made it clear that I had no intention of making some kind of video complaining or trying to respond to Red Pill Black since there are so many Red Pill content creators on YouTube. I felt like it would kind of be racist to call out Candace Owen for having opinions that a whole bunch of other people are having. And a little bit sexist because we have our share of African American men who are Red Pill. And truth be told, I'm just not that blown away by the whole Red Red Pill movement. A movement that seems to forget that the whole notion of taking the red pill versus the blue pill comes from The Matrix, a film that was created by two now trans women that features an incredibly diverse and international cast facing off against a bunch of Aryan looking dudes in black suits and black sunglasses who all look exactly the same. So if The Matrix is not making a statement about diversity, I don't know what it's doing. But I do wanna talk about the fact that now it looks like the red pill community is coming after Candace Owen, AKA Red Pill Black, created a website called Social Autopsy, which was basically a doxing website. It was a place where if someone used defamatory language or just said something that annoyed you, you could take a screenshot of whatever it was that they said 
and post it to this website with their name, their address, their workplace, their school. It was kind of a hot mess. I don't think you can say that creating a doxing website is necessarily unconstitutional. If she's simply creating a place where people can go on and post information about people based on their feelings, I don't know that that's necessarily even illegal. Of course, how can you verify that this isn't just someone using the website to bully someone Someone else or for some other nefarious purposes. The thing that I find most offensive, however, isn't that people were upset with Candace Owen for this social autopsy website. It seemed to me that what was upsetting people wasn't the fact that this website had been created, but that Candace Owen wasn't really red pill. In fact, the existence of the website was simply being used as evidence that Candace wasn't really red pill. So why was Candace Owen right? At some point, Candace Owen made a decision that the way that they were living their life and their liberal identity wasn't rewarding enough. Candace comes from a financial background and at some point Candace decided that they wanted to monetize something about their identity and it wasn't working to monetize a liberal persona. So Candace literally made a shift to the right. Candace became right in order to make themselves a more saleable commodity on the internet. And this is something that I've talked about happening in past videos. And it's something that doesn't surprise me at all. This is one of the reasons why I didn't think it was necessary to even have a conversation about Candace Owen as someone who was presenting themselves as part of the conservative right, or even an anti-SJW, or anti-Black Lives Matter. These opinions are part of personas that are just put on for show on YouTube, where let's face it, the bar for discourse is pretty darn low. Other than a handful of very small channels where I feel people are really trying to engage in discussions in a really meaningful way, the channels that we see celebrated are the ones that are, for the most part, engaging in gossip and pretty cookie cutter formats. It's a little like reverse Mad Libs instead of coming up with clever words to fit into a pre-made story. We take any story and try to fit it neatly around these buzzwords. Did I use cuck? Did I use SJW? It gets to be exhausting. There seems to be some light at the end of this tunnel. I don't know about anyone else, but I haven't been seeing a lot of the usual suspects in my feed. It may be that I've just been ignoring them enough that they don't appear. It may be that they've simply lost interest and moved on and aren't making content anymore. Anyway, I promised you all kinds of content and I promise I'm going to continue talking about the Constitution and we are definitely going to be continuing with our Pedagogy of the Oppressed study group and likely some study groups around cooperatives as well. I don't know, I was just feeling kind of glum and wasn't really motivated and sometimes I feel like I just need to go with that flow and find out where I'm at. And so thanks for being patient with me, y'all. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto.